Hey, y'all. I'm a little late tonight. Had some issues with my printer. <laughs> Not wanting to print. <laughs> Luckily, I sorted it out, but... It was not a fan of the printing. So I had to kind of finagle it just a little bit. Just just a little bit. Oh, sorry about that. It's a bit loud. I've got my mat all pushed out. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I was leaning on it, setting up my camera. Okay, so we are live. We are here scrapping in my memorial mini, mini album. And this is a mini album that I made uh, for a tutorial actually, and then decided I really, really liked it and wanted to fill it. And so we've been slowly on the lives adding in pages. Sometimes there are interactive bits, sometimes there aren't. But uh, just adding in pictures of people in my family who have passed, or my husband's family, who have passed away. And uh, it's been very cathartic for me, but also it's a very accessible way to share these stories with my kids about these family members uh, because I didn't want to do like a whole album for each person, but I did want to share some of the stories of family members that I was very close to and uh, or that maybe they didn't get to meet and would really enjoy hearing about. So that is what we're working in today. So I have some really lovely pictures to play with. Some of them, see this is the one I was having trouble with. And when it finally decided to print, a couple of the photos were a little red. And I went back, tried to re-edit them, and it made no difference. So <laughs> we're just going with it. Just, just go with the flow. Don't try to fight the printer, because you're gonna lose. <laughs> so I've gone ahead and printed out a couple of photos of my grandma and a now most people in this album are going to get a few pages uh, depending on how close i was with them how many stories i want to tell they'll get more pages uh, obviously my dad gets an entire section here because i have a lot of stories to tell about him in particular but say my husband's grandma will probably get a couple of pages and uh, his grandpa will get a couple of pages uh, but I probably won't do a whole section on them because I didn't know them very well when they passed. Uh, my aunt will get a couple of pages, things like that. And But like grandparents, I'll probably have a few more because I've spent more time with them. And the collection that I'm using is Simple Stories Heart, which came out last year. But I actually have been looking for more of it because I really like it. It's a beautiful collection. It's not monochromatic, but it's almost... It's a lot of, here, here's the color scheme, kind of a gray, black, teal, and gold sort of color scheme. I guess you could see that from the front. Uh, but I like the limited color scheme. I think it allows the pictures to really blossom because you, you don't, don't know what colors your pictures are gonna end up being. They are what they are. And so to make sure I can include all the pictures that I want to, I am just gonna use a very simple color scheme in the background that just flows throughout the album. So to get started, I'm gonna go ahead and cut down my photos here. I have printed out four to a four by six here of my dad. And I think these are gonna just go on, I have a, a page in here of, that I'm gonna do some just like really random photos that don't necessarily have a story, but I want to include them. So this is, there's one on there. Some of, a lot of them are honestly just him making faces because my, sorry about that guys. Not a great way to start the live stream. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Alrighty, so I'm just at this point, just cutting up these photos. How's everybody week, everybody's week been? Oh goodness, gotta love technology. Gotta love it, even if you love to hate it. You just gotta, gotta love it. Hopefully I am unfrozen now. Uh, not a great way to start the live, gotta say. <laughs> Sorry about that. My uh, internet likes to drop occasionally. and It has been doing so well lately that I was, it kind of caught me off guard. 
I was not prepared for that one, internets. Thanks. Thanks for waking me up. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, how much smaller do you need to be? Yeah, so I'm going to trim these guys down to make them fit in that spot. I guess I need one more there for that one. I'll have to find one that will fit. But yeah, these two photos here are of my beautiful grandma. This one was from when she was much younger and was in the military, I believe. Not really sure what her position was. I could ask. I probably will ask when I go to write the journaling for her photo here. I will ask what, uh, what she did in the military. But I do know she was in the military. Beautiful, beautiful woman. And this is her with my grandpa. And uh, this is obviously when she was much older. This is how I remember her. And she is uh, was a very, she's a very quiet lady overall. She kind of kept to herself mostly. And she didn't put up with much at the same time. So I think that's kind of typical for former military. <laughs> and I believe she came from a military home growing up as well. So that would make sense, actually. I guess it would anyway. Okay, and then I have this super cute photo of my dad with my youngest son, Joseph. And it is my absolute favorite photo of him ever that I own. He was so good with kids, so good with kids. And Joseph hated getting his picture taken. And this was one of the few photos at this age that I was able to get a picture of Joseph looking at the camera and smiling because Papa made it possible. <laughs> hey Nadine, welcome, welcome. I have, so I have a few photos here. We're going to go ahead and scrap in my mini album. I'm gonna start by going ahead and getting these guys uh, in here. I just thought it would be fun to have some like really random tiny photos uh, in here of his many crazy facial expressions because my dad was an extremely expressive person. You pretty much always knew what was going on with him, <laughs> whether he was happy with you or not, we'll just say, because uh, his face, his face could hide nothing. His face could hide nothing. He was always very, very expressive, which I always thought was very funny. Did this not cut straight? I have to tell you, that guillotine cutter drives me nuts. I never know if it's cutting straight or if it's me kind of looking at this and I'm wondering if it's the paper. <laughs> it can't be the guillotine cutter, could it? No, see it's straight on the side. Go figure. So how has everybody's week been? We have just been hanging around the house per normal, getting ready to start school. We finalized our school plans. Hey, Angela. Welcome, welcome. Uh, we finalized our school plans. My oldest and the girls, the twins, the youngest, are going to do distance learning to the best of our ability. And if it's too much trouble, then we'll just homeschool them. I have homeschooled the whole crew in the past, so it's really not a big deal if I need to do that. But since Alex is in high school, I'd rather not. You know, it's just a lot to deal with for high school and going back and forth to public school and dealing with the credits uh, in, in high school. It's not so bad if you homeschool like from the beginning for high school and then you can keep track of your own credits, you make your own plans, etc. But when you bounce back and forth between the public school and the homesch homeschooling, it can be very frustrating at the high school level keeping track of all those credits, making sure he gets the appropriate credit for things, you know. Hey, Virginia. And I don't I don't want to do that if I don't have to. <laughs> it's kind of where I'm at. It's, it's a big headache that I'm not sure I'm ready to take on unless necessary. Whereas the twins, I have a feeling their schooling is going to look a lot like a teacher video recording them reading a book or practicing something. Uh, some sort of skill and then us watching the video and trying it or something. I'm not really sure what to expect with uh, second grade virtual learning, to be honest, uh, especially for a special needs class. I, I don't really know what to expect. 
So we'll, we'll have to wait and see on that. But like I said, if I have to homeschool them, I will. I just, it's just a lot easier when transferring them back into public school if we just stayed there. Okay, you may hear some noises in the background. My twins are still in the tub playing. So they uh, are having themselves a lovely time. <laughs> and being fairly quiet at the moment, which is pretty good uh, overall. Normally they're quite loud. That's just how they are. It's just the, the, the way it is. I think I might for this one because I just realized I could do this a lot easier. Maybe I'll just pop both of them on there. The same piece of paper. Yeah, I'll do it. So I'm creating a little grid here on this page of just kind of random photos of my dad. And I think it's just because I want to get several photos in here of him. And so I figured if I do like one page like this where I just have just a bunch of photos of just random stuff, nothing important, just random stuff, uh, that would be that would be a good good way to get quite a few on here. And then I'll do separate stories for some of the other more meaningful photos. These are just sort of silly shots mostly or just kind of shots where he's been caught off guard a little bit and uh he was always really good at, at making faces and just generally being silly he was very very good at that <laughs> okay go ahead and get those tapes in. i'll need to find one more i'm sure i can find another one so i just need to i thought i only needed four but i actually needed five hey dana how you doing how are you Anybody have any plans for this weekend? A friend of mine says she's going to go camping, which would be lovely. My kiddos and my husband went camping about a week ago, two weeks ago. I'm glad you're doing well. Camping is a good socially distanced vacation option. <laughs> if you were looking for one. So keep that in mind. I'm not too fussed if those are perfect or not not really a big deal because my kids don't care you know I keep trying to tell myself that perfection is not required that is a personal motto and when I start finding myself fussing over things and trying to make things perfectly line up and this and that and I'm like you know what my kids don't care <laughs> and they're the only ones who see these albums <laughs> it's all right it's all right oh you're gonna join in Victoria Marie's crop that's awesome that's awesome, Nadine. I saw she was doing that. I do not have enough time to sit down and do that sort of thing, but it looks like fun. She did mention in her live today that she may do a Harry Potter themed one, and that certainly caught my attention. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Harry Potter. I would love for her to do a Harry Potter crop. I think that would be awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You're moving into your new ICU week this weekend. Wow, that is busy. Busy, 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 busy. All our local hospitals are pretty busy too. We're hearing conflicting reports on how they're doing, but generally, if you can stay out of the hospital, you should, is what I'm kind of getting the impression uh, we need to do. <laughs> if you can avoid it, please do. Please do. It's just probably better for everyone if we just stay away from the hospitals as much as possible at this point. Okay. Yeah, that came out cute. Oh, I managed to get color shine on him. Oops. Sorry, Dad. He wouldn't mind. My dad was a mechanic, and then he was a supervisor of mechanics. So uh, he was used to getting messy. So I need one more photo here that I need to print. Where do I want to put this one? Let's see. Let's see. No, that was the end. So I'm going to keep track. That was the end. I think I'm going to put a big journaling spot here talking about his many expressions and how silly he was. I need to fill in some journaling in this. I've got lots of places for journaling. I need to go ahead and just fill in those places. I think for this one, I love this page. I'm going to make a pocket 
and stick in a place for journaling behind it. I think that would work quite well. All right, let's see. Yes, yes, let's do that. So I will need a pretty good sized piece of paper. Let's see here. Oh, I forgot. And this is double sided, which I love. I love double sided paper. I know some people don't care for it, but I really do like it. I like that it gives me more options. I don't have any of that plain blue paper. I must have used that already. Although those spots are kind of speaking to me. Oh, those, those are nice too. Too many options. Okay. I think I'm going to go with this. Get a nice little pop of that teal behind. Might be nice. Maybe. I'll probably put it on white cardstock as well, which will help. Also go with something a little subtler. <laughs> Maybe. Huh. Well, yeah, I could do black. There's black on the other side of this. Ooh, I like that. I think we'll go with that. Because there's a lot of black on this side, so I think that might work out quite nicely. So let's set you back here for a moment and sort out what size this needs to be. Let me map my photo real quick. Yeah, so I love this photo. I think I need to blow this. It's a very good quality photo too because my brother took it with his fancy camera and I, uh, I think I could blow it up pretty good size, maybe eight by 10 or so. And I think I want to frame it and put it in my craft room to remind me of him it just amazed me. He always amazed me with how he just took to babies and little kids so easily. And they took to him <laughs> so easily. That always amazed me. He, uh, he was a deacon at our church. And so he was the guy sitting at the back of the church, kind of keeping an eye on things, trying to, to see if anybody needed anything. He was really good at it. And uh, if uh, someone was holding a little baby, or a little toddler even, and said toddler was just fussing, just having a, a good old fuss. And you know, mom feels like, oh, a little embarrassed. I'm gonna have to get up and leave. And uh, you know, you're looking around and getting a little concerned. People are gonna start <laughs> thinking about, hey, you're uh, interrupting the service. <laughs> and uh, he would see that, he would hear it. And he'd kind of make his way over there. And if he knew the parents, okay, if he knew mama or daddy uh, pretty well, he would just show up behind them. <laughs> Give me the baby. <laughs> and he'd pick that baby up and take the baby for a little walk around the sanctuary at the back and just pop them up on his shoulder and pat their back. And nine times out of ten, that baby would be asleep in ten minutes tops. 10 minutes tops. He had what we like to refer to as the magic shoulder. <laughs> My husband seems to have one as well because he did the same thing for our twins. And uh, it was amazing. It was amazing. He's just a calm person. I think it's just because he's such a calm person. I am not. I am not a calm person. I am a very hyperactive person. And when I get stressed, oh, it shows. It shows. <laughs> There's no hiding it because it shows big time. But yeah, he was great. Hey, Wendy, welcome, welcome. So he, he was great. He was great for that. But if he didn't know the parents, he would go over and offer, just, just gently offer, hey, would you like me to, to take a little baby here for a walk around the back of the sanctuary and see if I can get him or her to sleep? And uh, I, I know most new parents were like, oh, <laughs> are you sure are you sure and he's like yeah I got five grandkids we're good <laughs> oh because he definitely had my crew sorted out they knew papa they knew on site he was if he was coming after him they were gonna get to escape <laughs> 
Uh, he was a fun guy. He was a lot of fun. Definitely a lot of fun. Yeah, I think that's great. Then I'll do a little embellishing here at the bottom and we'll have a little pocket for our journaling. Oh, thank you. It's from Viskers. Uh, I got mine from uh, my friend Miranda who has a close to my heart thing and they were selling them at close to my heart shop. But you can get them most anywhere, I think. I'm going to be using a lot of tape because uh, this is an interactive element and I just want to make sure it sticks together. But yeah, yeah, he was a fun guy. He was a fun guy. He, uh, I, he really loved having all them grandkids, let me tell you. <laughs> and when the twins came along, oh man, oh man. He, he just soaked up every minute he could with them. Absolutely every minute. He would come over after work, before he'd even go home for dinner or anything like that. He'd come over after work and uh, just lay down on the floor. He was real tired, you know, being a mechanics uh, supervisor, working in a, a busy, messy shop. He would be real tired, but he'd, he'd come on over and just sit on the floor with them and watch TV or uh, let them crawl all over him and talk to them and, oh, wonderful, wonderful memories and photos from that time. Let me tell you. Because he passed when the girls were two? Yeah, two. So they, they don't remember him, I'm sure. But uh, I have photos. I have, <laughs> I have photos to help them remember. Uh, Heritage Collection. Are you talking about the, uh, the paper collection? Because that is Heart from Simple Stories. One of my favorite Simple Stories collections ever. And I'm running low on it. I'm trying to decide if I should attempt to get more of it or not. Because part of me is like, Laura, you're actually finishing a collection. <laughs> Don't get more of it. <laughs> Don't make it worse. <laughs> Don't add to your stash when you're almost done with it. But at the same time, it's a real, it's a really beautiful collection. All right, what do I have in here? I thought maybe I had some of those cards. Did I use all of those up? I guess I may have. I had some three by four cut aparts in here, but I seem to be missing them. All right, let me pull out my embellishments too. Let's see what I got. Oh, there might be one in here actually. So this is a mix of ephemera, uh, fussy cut elements, stickers, and chipboard, and it's pretty much all I have left for <laughs> embellishing this little uh, mini album, but uh, it's it's fun. I seem to make it work. Yes, I had some three by four cards left. Good. I think, how tall? No, I'll have to make it a little bit bigger, but it would be a nice one set. Oh, you know? I think I'd like it better to go this way. But it'd be a nice element for the front and then we'll put journaling on the back. Let's see, thinking of you, that's really nice. Love? Um, no. I think this one, because a lot of these have a very like card sort of thing, like kind of a sentiment that is for a, uh, like, um, you know, thinking of you, uh, praying for you, uh, may the love of your family and friends sustain you in your time of loss. I mean, that's more for a card. Uh, so very sorry. <laughs> Not great for the mini album. So those haven't gotten used yet. That's pretty much what's left of them. So yeah, I think we'll use this one, but I'm going to uh, make it a little bit bigger and I want it to sit out like that. So, let's see what we can do. All right, maybe I'll pull out this one. How do I want to do that? Gotta make it pretty big. Got to make it pretty big. I think I want more of that black. I still have this piece. Sorry, thinking out loud. <laughs> Uh, quite the habit, let me tell you. Could do something like that. I 
think it comes to about here. Yeah, it's Simple Stories Heart is the name of this one. It's really pretty. I've really enjoyed playing with it quite a lot. Let's see, about here, I guess. Out comes the trimmer again. The struggle is real, that's true. It's true. I'm trying to decide, do I, do I, do I let it go? Like one of the things with uh, Chamel's collections, knowing that there won't be any more, <laughs> I've had a really hard time not just, oh, I need to go buy more Chamel. I need to go buy more Chamel because there won't be any more, as far as we know anyway. And uh, I'm not looking forward to running out of Chamel. I absolutely love her stuff. This is nice. I don't know why I'm going so black with it though. Let's see, let me try. I need one I like both sides, I think. That's that's the trouble. I need to, yeah, that one will do. This one probably would be best. Okay, so yeah, we got a, a lot of black and gold happening, but I think that's kind of nice. It's a little change for me. That way we can make it thick enough to fit. I think I need to go a little bit wider. No, I'm just gonna cut it here. You're liking the six by six series? Yes, yes, that's a fun one. I, uh, I need to get back into it and do a few more I have uh, have had so many different hops come up and DT projects to do <laughs> that I, I haven't been it in August for sure because I already have two planned, two uh, layouts planned for August and I'm pretty excited to do them. Hopefully we'll get two in August. We'll see how we go. I'm also planning out uh, Scrap Timber, which is coming up very quickly. And if you're if you haven't been with me for that full year, uh, in in September I do a video a day marathon, just like I did in March, and we'll be celebrating three years on YouTube at that point, which is kind of exciting. At least it is for me, <laughs> and I'm hoping to have a giveaway in September. I don't do them very often, but uh, yeah, when I can, I do like to, to do that. It's a little bit fun. A little bit fun. No, I don't have the new Cocoa Vanilla uh, collection yet. Thank you, Dana. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I don't just do process videos. I do DIY embellishment videos. I usually do a Q&A at some point. So if you have any questions <laughs> you'd like me to include in that video, think other people would like to, to ask me as well, please do. I think I'm gonna put this up a little bit like that. How does that look on the back? Yeah, I like that. And then I'll put, uh, I'll probably punch a hole or something and have a bit of twine to pull it up, make it easy to get it out of that pocket. Lots of tape. Yeah, the new Coco Vanilla collection is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, and I'm really, really excited to get my hands on it, but I haven't yet. They've, they've had a bit of a backlog with Order, which I don't know who's expecting that or not, but they had a huge, huge pre-order. And so they're trying very, very hard to get as much product as possible. Probably I shouldn't have taken that tape all the way up <laughs> in retrospect. <laughs> all right, Laura. Okay, I'm just gonna tuck some tape under there. It'll be fine. No one will ever know that I over taped it. It's all a secret. There we go. Just sort of lift and tuck. Luckily I hadn't pushed it down all the way yet. I caught it 
There we go. That's better. So then now that will hopefully, oh, oh, get out of the way, friendo. Just tuck back here quite nicely. Let's see. Yeah, I definitely think it needs a little bit of, of uh, twine to, to kind of help pull it in and out. Grab my hole punch here. Mail issues. Oh yeah, international mail has been really hard. Uh, I just think it's because there's so many mail systems that aren't fully running at the moment. Uh, I've heard a rumor I do not know if it's true, but I did hear a rumor that the U.S. mail system is having a really hard time right now keeping up, and um, they're trying to do some sort of, I don't really understand it, but they're trying to do some sort of cost-saving measure or something. I don't know why they're doing it right now when <laughs> mail is at its highest point of need, you know, being able to, to get a hold of things. But they're, they're apparently deciding to, uh, to slow it down for some reason. I'm not sure what they're hoping to accomplish there, but I doubt highly it'll get what they would intended. So we'll see. We'll see. The U.S. is in a weird place. It's in a weird place right now. I really don't know what's going on. Thought the pandemic was scary. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh man. American politics. Not not fun. Not not a fun place to be, I'll be honest. I don't like having to, to deal with it on a daily basis. I'm used to, okay, it's time to vote again. Let's do some research, figure out who we're voting for. Great, okay, voted, we're done. <laughs> We're done <laughs> and that has not been the case lately it's been let's fight about everything let's argue about everything and you're just like oh can we not can we can we just not this time maybe I'd really rather not <laughs> uh, so I'm thinking this blue is kind of the perfect size I think I'll just go for it I think, yeah, I think I'm just gonna go for it. I have that little blue index card on the back. I used to use index cards for journaling spots all the time. Ready-made lines, yes please. <laughs> uh, it was on CBS News tonight, really? I don't really understand the, the thought process behind slowing down the mail system but it seems like a really stupid idea with everybody stuck at home. <laughs> Just my opinion. As someone who is stuck at home and does rely on the mail pretty heavily. Uh, frustrating. I mean, not that I care if like, say, my scrapbooking supplies take an extra couple days and a big deal. But some people have get like prescriptions in the mail and things that are really important. And that's actually what I was concerned about. Like, that's a really stupid idea. Let's not do that. <laughs> Too many people rely on the mail to be playing around with it. Okay, maybe something cute like that. Maybe a little star just to kind of dress it up a little. Maybe I'll put the star on the side. There we go. I don't know that thinking of you. Love you forever. That's better. Love you forever. There we go. I think that's quite sweet. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. You got the green light for schools. Well, that's good. I think. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows if that's good? I don't know what to do, honestly. I just hope and pray that by next year, we get this all sorted out and we're in a better place that the kids can go back to school because there's a lot of parents. I mean, there is no judgment for me, let me tell you. If you need to send your kid to school, you do what you need to do because some folks have jobs that they can't work from home. 
they don't have that option and I fully understand that uh, it's I mean it's not ideal for the kiddos or the teachers but I get it I do get it I've been there I was a single mom for a while and it was hard it was hard I can't imagine going through this right now like I did when I was a single mom after my divorce for sure that would have been really hard so I can only imagine what some folks are going through trying to balance work and kids and health you know I, I just just been thinking of all of those people and really hoping that they can do the best they can but this is part of why I'm keeping my kids home as I figure if I keep my kids at home that I am relieving some of the burden on the school uh, that's five kids that they don't have to uh, worry about social distancing because they're already social distancing all the way at home <laughs> already handled don't worry about it school we got it covered you know that sort of thing is just kind of what I had in mind was like I need to to do what I can because I can I guess is the way I would phrase it because I have that option because I have that opportunity to keep my kids at home. I should keep my kids at home. That's just my opinion. I'm not quite doing that. No, I have not heard about that. Is that something that they're doing per school or per state? How does that work exactly? The red, yellow, green system, I guess is what I'm saying. Just realized I needed to grab my charger cable for my tablet. So don't mind me. I'm just gonna look really strange for a minute. <laughs> Cause of course it's under my desk. Come on. Oh, had it. I love that so much when that happens. Bear with me. Plug in my tablet so I don't lose you guys. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I won't lose you now. All right. We're good. We're good. Okay. Make sure I can see comments. Okay. So red only virtual. Yellow two days at school, two days virtual. Wednesday independent study. Green go to school five days a week. Oh, I've not heard of that. Is that just in certain states, Wendy, or is that a particular state? Because I have not heard of that at all. Sounds like a good idea. I will say in Mississippi, our hospitals are starting to become a bit overwhelmed. They're not fully at capacity, I don't think. Uh, I hear, you know, conflicting reports on that occasionally from different places but as to where we stand but um, I don't think we're at capacity yet but I get the impression we're getting close which is worrisome for sure worrisome it's in New England for sure uh, that's a very very smart way to do it because then you can kind of go school by school and and just determine like what areas need to be on green, need to be on red, and it can change as necessary. One of the things that I had worried about too with my kids is my kids don't handle big sweeping changes very well. And so uh, going to school and then having to virtual school for a couple weeks and then popping back into school and potentially having to virtual school again, you know, it uh, would really disrupt their, their routine and I was concerned that would be a, a real problem, honestly, for them. Just I just think it might be easier. We don't know yet. We're going to give it a try. I really don't know. But I'm hoping it's going to be easier for them. So that came out kind of cute, my little journaling spot. Have a little tag here. We'll just slide that on in. Doot, doot, 
Do, do, do. There we go. I think that looks cute. We'll do a little decoration here probably. What was I saying? Yeah, so I think it would that would mess up their schedule a little bit. And uh, I don't know that that's worth doing, honestly. I think that might just be making it worse, you know, to, to do that, honestly. I kind of feel like that would just be making it more difficult for them to handle the big changes. Whereas if we do virtual from the start, hopefully we uh, can avoid that and we can just stick to virtual. Yeah, homeschooling has gone up tremendously. Well, I'll tell you that even if only half of the kids rode the bus, our buses would still be packed because they stuff our kids three to a seat and they are all full. So even with half the kids, there's no way they could socially distance. I think maybe if they did a quarter, but I don't know that they could do that feasibly. They pretty much told us plan on driving your kids to school if they're going to go to school. And they would just pick up the ones that absolutely couldn't do that. I thought that was interesting. Makes sense, but I just, I thought it was interesting. A lot of parents already do drive their kids in our district. We have a huge, huge district. A lot of kids attend my kids' schools. Uh, the primary school, which has three grade levels, kindergarten, first, and second, has over 600 kids in it, which is insane. Uh, <laughs> when I went to school in Michigan, we had little neighborhood schools. And so you never had more than, oh, what do I wanna say? It was about 20 kids per class, three classes per grade, roughly. So that's 60 kids per grade, and there were six grades, so 360, so about half as many kids as currently attend my twin school, but only three grades in their school. It's crazy. That's, that's a crazy amount of children in one school. To me, that just blows my mind. I cannot even imagine. Wow, 50 to 70 in the whole school. Holy coal, holy cow was the word. Holy coal, apparently. Holy cow. Yeah, no. I mean, even in Michigan, the schools, that was a pretty big school, but they were neighborhood schools. And there were like four, I think, four neighborhood schools that fed into the middle school. So yeah, there's a lot of kids in the middle school and high school, but at the lower levels, there really weren't. And you stayed at the same school from kindergarten to fifth grade. But, um, yeah, down here they do it different. They split it up a lot. Like, they try to make it better. Like, I think they try. So they've got kindergarten through second in one school. They've got third through fifth in another school. Six, seven, eight in the middle. And then, of course, your typical nine through 12 in the high school. But the high school has 2,000 children. <laughs> 2,000 children in the high school. And that blows my mind. Absolutely blows my mind. My high school had about 1,200 tops. Then that's tops. I don't even think it had that many. I think it was probably closer to 1,000. Uh, but yeah, no, no way we had 2,000. But those are big schools. That's big schools. And I think that's part of the problem. Like it's, that's a lot harder to do down here in, um, oh, my little girl's being noisy again. <laughs> but we're down here in the South, they have these massive schools and it's, it's really hard. I can't imagine how they're, I honestly don't know how they're gonna social distance these kids. I really, really do not know. So that's a large part of why we are not sending our kids to school. That was a long, long way to get back to that. <laughs> Sorry about that. A little tangent, a little tangent tonight. That's okay. That's okay. That's why we have the lives. I need these chatty moments, guys. I really enjoy chatting with you guys. It's, it's very good for my brain. <laughs> it's good for my brain to have someone to chat with. 
this may be a bit of a longer live, guys. I do still have two more pages to do, so uh, feel free to pop in and out as you need to. So I'll be on here for a good minute, probably another 30 minutes at least, to get these pages done. That's all right. I feel like it's been longer than just a week since I've chatted with y'all. I really do. It has been a week. I can't imagine going to a school that small, Wendy. I don't even know what that looks like. I will say though, I don't know that we could move to New England. It's very cold up there in the winter. <laughs> My husband and I are not snowbirds by any stretch of the imagination. He's a southerner and I just don't like snow. <laughs> I grew up with snow. I, I don't need more snow. Huh. Granted, this, the, the summers are, are rough down here, but yeah, no more snow, thanks. <laughs> no, thank you, please. <laughs> huh. I think I'm going to tuck this under here as well, just because I can, just, just because I don't know when to stop. And then we'll move on. Then we'll move on. There we go. So we got one page done. Well, technically nearly two pages because I did stick down all those photos in the other page as well. Come on. I know I should have stuck this down first before I stuck down. I glued everything down, but I didn't. And so this is where we are and this is how we're doing. Luckily, no dive bombing flies this time. So, you know, I feel like we're making progress. <laughs> <laughs> Frederick F. Fly has uh, deigned not to join us tonight, and I'm totally fine with his decision. I respect his decision and encourage it, to be honest. <laughs> All right, here she is. So here's my grandma. I think I want... Hmm. Maybe here. Maybe here. Maybe we'll add a bit of pattern onto this one with some paper. Got this paper. Might be nice. Kind of use this gray as actually kind of a, a of an outline instead. So that there we go. Okay. You love it. Oh yes, the heat and humidity. It's it's real bad. <laughs> it's real bad down here, I gotta be honest. It's, it's very, very, the, the summers are rough. They're very, very rough. I mean, I completely understand. Uh, you know, you hear Florida, Florida folks, I have several friends who live in Florida, and you hear Florida folks talk about snowbirds, about people who live up north in the summer, and then move down to Florida for the winter. And I get it, okay? <laughs> I understand. I didn't, I never did kind of quite understand that when I lived in Michigan, but I understand now why they do that. It's very tempting. I couldn't afford to do that right now, but it's very tempting because I know Michigan summers are so much better. It's just so hot. It just gets so swelteringly hot that even going outside just is miserable, truly miserable. Pop that photo up there. Oh yes, I love old photos too. Uh, this one, I actually did a little bit of editing to it because it was kind of a rough photo. And so I just kind of cleaned it up a little bit with my editing software so it was a bit clearer. The colors were a bit crisper. Uh, she had beautiful, beautiful eyes. She's a beautiful lady. And uh, I will have to message my mom and find out what her rank was, where she was working, all that kind of thing. I don't see, actually, I don't know if she had, like, I don't know how that works at that time. I don't really understand. I'll be honest. Not a military uh, person. I don't know much about it, I guess I should say. I don't know the ranks. I don't know how her service functioned at that time, because I believe it was during a war that she was serving, I believe, pretty sure. 
And she was serving, serving stateside, of course. But I don't really know what she did. I'm sure my mom knows. My mom is a, our kind of our family historian. And uh, she's a, a big fan of tracking our ancestry and such. So she has lots of that kind of information. So I have no worries <laughs> that I'd be able to find out what I need to know. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm going to be doing uh, some vintage photos pretty soon on some scrapbook layouts because I want to do an album of my own childhood. I want to do an album of my dad's life. He and I were really, really close. And I think it would be really awesome to find some old photos, even photos of, of you know, before I knew him, before I was born. And... I'm hoping, I've gathered a couple of stories from family members uh, from when he was a teenager because <laughs> my, my dad was a, was a fun character from what I hear. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me, I'll preface with that. Uh, knowing my dad, it doesn't surprise me that he was a fun character as a teenager and a bit of a troublemaker. I would not say troublemaker, I would say trouble resolver. <laughs> <laughs> my dad wasn't usually the one creating the trouble, but he was more than willing to help the trouble end. He was more than willing to jump into the trouble <laughs> once it had been started. <laughs> oh man, some of these stories just crack me up because it fits him. Oh, it fits him for sure. He was such a fun guy. Okay. Okay, let's see. How, I love this remember so much and I've yet to be able to get it onto a page. What was the other part of it? My? Remember my, that doesn't make any sense. Did I use the third word? Um, <laughs> all right, Laura. What did I do? Because I don't see any more of this word. I have my and remember. I don't have any other part. Okay. So let's just go with remember. Because <laughs> I don't know what I've done. I honestly don't know what I've done with it. Okay, maybe if we put this little bit of black behind it, it'll help that word kind of pop. And it'll kind of give a little shelf for my photo to sit on. That'll work. We'll make that work. I think so. Yeah. No, our winters are nice, but they're often very wet. Like we get a lot of rain usually in the winter here. Uh, a friend of mine asked, winter and spring, especially in the spring, but uh, in the winter as well, she asked me about coming camping in Mississippi. And I said, well, here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> don't come camping in the summer because I guarantee it's going to be too hot. It just is. <laughs> we have accepted that. You just, you don't want to do anything here in the summer. It's just, it's not great. But in the winter, now that's the time to come. After, you know, October to, to December, you're good. If you don't mind it being a little chilly, then January and February are not bad because we don't normally get snow, but we do get some rain. And as someone who grew up in Michigan with uh, several winters where we had giant snow drifts that <laughs> covered uh, the front part of the house, I have a vivid memory, okay, of my dad snow plowing out a pathway through snow that was up to about my shoulder. Now I may have been small, so let me, <laughs> let me elaborate slightly. I may have been seven or eight at the time, but that's still over three feet of snow. You know, that's, that's a lot of snow. And he had carved out a little path to the bus stop because three feet of snow wasn't enough to cancel school. <laughs> No, it was three feet of snow because we were at the end of a, uh, what's it, one of those curved 
Ah, the word's not popping in my head. Rounded end of the street. It's just the end of the street. It'll come later. <laughs> It'll pop in my head later. A cove, I guess. It was it was just like the end of the street and there was a big round island and you had to turn around there. And uh we the snow plows would come through and just shove all the snow right in front of our house. <laughs> really, really nice of them, you know. <laughs> real, real considerate. Oh, my dad hated that so much. Oh, it made him crazy that they would do that. But they did, and he'd have to carve out a, a path for us to get to the bus stop. And man, it could be bitterly, they rarely, rarely canceled school in Michigan. I mean, it had to be a big, big amount of snow so that the snow plows couldn't keep up, pretty much. Pretty much. Do I have some cardstock to put under oh, under the photo? Uh, it's got cardstock. I've got white cardstock under it. Don't worry, it'll stand out. I'm not gonna decorate this one quite as heavily as I did the last one. There we go. I think I might do something fairly simple, like just backing this with a little piece of paper. Sorry, my brain didn't finish my thoughts. <laughs> Love it when that happens. Just sort of short circuited there for a second. Ah, it happens to the best of us. Let's see. Um, got some scraps here. This might be nice. Just keep it kind of simple, I think. I think I just want to keep this one pretty simple. She was not a flashy person, my grandma. She, she preferred things casual, relaxed, that sort of thing. Oh, for the word remember. Yeah, I've got a piece of black uh, paper under it. You can see it better in person than you can on the camera. Um, in person, I have no trouble reading it, but yeah, on the camera, it does look a little <laughs> hard to read. <laughs> oh, goodness. Cul-de-sac. That was the word. <laughs> uh, oh, you had a blizzard. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. I think, what was it, two years ago that the snow was real bad in, in the Northeast? Was that two years ago or was that three? That they got so much snow, they just got dumped on and dumped on and it was over and over and over. They just couldn't get ahead of it. Uh, I have family still in Michigan and oh, they were so over it. They were, <laughs> I didn't blame them at all. But they were so, so over it. And, oh, it was just so much snow. I was very thankful we were not dealing with that. That much snow. I will say this, though. At least in Michigan and in the Northeast, they do have snow plows. <laughs> they own them. <laughs> so when it does snow, you're not just stuck. You know, they liked, everybody likes, in the North likes to tease the South about, you know, though they close for two inches of snow, which they do, but it's because we don't own our own uh, salt trucks or plows. We have to borrow them from the big city when they're done with them. Uh, so big city being Memphis usually. And so they just don't have them. Yes, Michigan's the same way. Michigan always gets tons of snow because of the lake effect. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Glamping. Yeah, uh, I could do glamping. <laughs> I could do, as long as I get to sleep in a real bed and there's no bugs touching me, I'm cool. <laughs> well, and, and there has to be air conditioning if it's in the summer. Because it's just too hot. It's just too hot. Too hot. I think I'm going to keep this page fairly simple just because 
I think that's appropriate for a military photo to keep it kind of simple. So I'll try not to go crazy with embellishments on this page. It's so hard. It is hard. It is really hard for me <laughs> to scale back. All right. We're going to keep it simple, though. We're going to try. We're going to make an attempt. An attempt will be made. Um, what do I want to use here? Oh, that's pretty, but I think I would have wanted to tuck it underneath. Oh, that's quite nice. Maybe just a little circle bit here. I could trim that down if I wanted. Maybe just there, that's kind of nice. Maybe just a word phrase here. Need to add some flowers. Well, that's my go-to, yes. <laughs> but I think because it is a, a kind of a serious military photo, I kind of feel like I should uh, scale it back a little bit on this one. Oh, uh, what other phrase do I have? Where are you, darling? Memories of you, that's pretty. How could I use that? Sort of like the idea of that popping out the top there. Not sure why, but I just do. Having it sit up a little higher and then kind of lean off that edge, it's kind of nice. We still need something else, and I have some really cute little hearts we can use on it as well. For some decoration, I feel like we need a word. Together forever, that's pretty, we could put that here with that one. This one says forever in my heart, that's nice. That's nice, I'll put that here and then we'll put a heart on the other side. That'll do. Trying to keep it simple. Uh, you wonder if she was a nurse. I don't think she was a nurse. I don't know. I don't know that though. I don't. But I don't think so. My her daughter was a nurse or is a nurse, but I don't think that she was. What do I know? I wasn't there <laughs> for sure. I was not there. So I will ask. I will find out. Hearts, hearts, heart. They have lost all the gold hearts. But I've got this nice gray one here, and then I've got some smaller hearts that I can uh, pop on top. That'll look nice. That'll look nice. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if she was a nurse or not. She was. Uh, I, I tend not to think so. Because she didn't work in nursing when she came home. When she, when uh, the war was over, she was not a nurse uh, as a profession. She was a stay-at-home mom for most of her life. And I would think if she was a nurse that she probably would have continued to be a nurse because they've had uh, some financial challenges over the years and being a nurse certainly would have helped I assume very common yeah I assume it was World War two I assume that as well uh, she was quite young she was quite young when uh, she was serving I don't believe she was married yet I don't think so But I'm not, I don't know. Like I said, I will ask my mom. <laughs> if anybody will know, she will know. She, she certainly did a lot more of that type of research than I have. And I keep hoping she's going to, uh, to write. She's mentioned possibly writing a book in the past. Uh, not, just not anything like a novel or anything. More like a historical record for the family. You know, just kind of a breakdown of who's who and what they did and where they lived and all that stuff. Sorry for the, the noise in the background. My children have a tendency to stomp up the stairs. Don't they all? <laughs> a 
Don't they all just stomp up the stairs? That's just a, a go-to thing, I think. I think I'm gonna put a little heart over here somewhere. Hmm. I think I can slide it in just there. And I'll put another one up here. And we'll call this page done. Oh, now we're slamming doors. Sorry about that. You should see how much fun it is to try to do voiceovers in this house. <laughs> I usually wait till everybody's gone to sleep because that's the only time it's quiet. But they're, they're getting ready for baths and stuff. So they're getting towels and running up and down the stairs, avoiding bath time like you do. <laughs> Yes, this is, I did fussy cut them. <laughs> Y'all know how I do. Yes, actually this, these little hearts are really cute. They actually came on the washi and I put it on a piece of white cardstock and fussy cut them out because I thought they were just like you. I thought these are beautiful. <laughs> See, <laughs> uh, you guys know. You know I love to love, love, love fussy cutting. I've been fussy cutting this morning. You want to see what I was fussy cutting this morning? Teeny tiny little flowers. Little itty bitty flowers. So many tiny flowers. <laughs> and having a lovely time with it too, let me tell you. I love the fussy cut. It's just so much fun. I probably fussy cut more than I scrapbook these days, to be honest, if I'm honest. All right, so that page is done, I think. Looks good. One more page to go with this photo. I think we could come up here. I think I kinda like this paper. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Not really amazing, just just enjoying myself. Just makes me happy. And you know what? In this crazy time especially, find what makes you happy and do it. <laughs> you keep that sanity somehow. Even if it's just sitting there cutting stuff out. If that's your happy place, by all means, go for it. All right, so we'll go ahead and do this one last picture and then we'll be done. All right, let's see. Is there a straight corner? I don't think there's a straight corner left on this scrap. So I'll just pop it on there and I'll make my own straight corners. Well, straight-ish corners, because let's be real. <laughs> straight corners may not happen, and that's okay. We'll just try our best. We'll just try our best and just be happy with what we get. No use in fussing over a wonky photo mat. There we go. And I like to do that. I like to do that. I think I do that with just about every photo. A little white border. I think it helps them kind of pop and stand out a little bit. Now this one, I think I want to go ahead and do a second mat on this one. What do I want to use? Oh, that's kind of cool. I got this pretty floral. That's kind of nice. I'm just going to ignore her red shirt because I just don't have anything that goes with it. So I'm just going to ignore it. <laughs> so pay no attention to her red shirt because that's, that's going to be ignored. Oh, well, thank you for that, Wendy. I appreciate it. <laughs> no, we homeschooled for two years with all five kids. And uh, honestly, it was a little chaotic, of course, but I think we're kind of used to it. I think we're kind of used to spending a lot of time together anyway. The only thing that's weird, honestly, is that they're not getting to go to scout events. And that's the only thing that's been kind of weird. Because normally they get to go uh, once a week to a scout 
you know, meeting and then once a month they get to go camping. And so it's really been weird that they don't get to go anywhere. It does seem to be bothering the kids more than me, but I'm, I'm a bit of a home, homebody myself. So home is where I like to be. And especially in the summer when it's too hot to really do anything. Might as well just stay at home. <laughs> to be honest. Alright. I love this little together forever. So I definitely want to include that. I think that's a good opportunity to include that. So let's see what else I got. Uh, I like this little heart. That's kind of nice. Don't know if I'll use it, but we'll give it a go. Gotta get some flowers on this one. Not sure how yet. Somewhere over here maybe. Maybe I'll do a journaling spot here. That sounds like an idea. <laughs> you know what, here's the thing about double-sided tape. I love double-sided tape. My daughter hates it. So <laughs> it really depends on your preference, but I just find it, once you get used to it, once you get used to how it works, you're used to the, can you can get that backing off and all that stuff, it's just faster. It's so much faster for me to just double-sided tape, double-sided tape. <laughs> and I go crazy with it. I go crazy with it. Oh, that's quite nice. I miss you every day. That's, that's nice. Let's do a, let's do a little journaling spot here. Uh, what do I want to use? Now I got to make a decision. <laughs> oh, our journaling spot, are we? <laughs> now I got to make a decision about the said journaling spot. All right. Could do, well, that's a bit much for one page. Uh, I had another piece that had, this one just has black and I could put the journaling spot on top of it, maybe like this, and then the journaling spot on top. I think that'll work. Oh, yeah, no. I refuse to get an ATG gun. I 100% refuse. I have seen so many people fight with that thing, trying to refill it. If you don't put the thing in just right, then it doesn't work. And, nope. <laughs> I do not have the patience for that. I have the patience for a lot of things. Fussy cutting, for example. But no, I do not have patience for tools that don't work or tools that are a pain in the butt to deal with. Uh, you know, my silhouette is an example. Uh, she's currently in timeout. And I say she because her name is Felicity. And uh, she is, in fact, in timeout at the moment. That did not work. Okay, Laura. Okay, 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 okay. I don't think that was straight, but that's okay. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Just keep telling yourself it'll be fine. <laughs> it will be fine. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, let's see here. Do I have like a cardstock? Yeah, I got a bit of cardstock right there. Okay. Anyway, yeah, Felicity's in timeout. I've had enough of her at the moment. I'm tired of her shenanigans, I'm tired of her sass. And so I've just been uh, ordering pre-cut cut files <laughs> from Christina at Redefine Creative because I can't be bothered. I don't have the patience for tools that don't work or that misbehave. I just don't, I don't have the patience. One of the reasons I replace my scissors every year. So every single year, at the beginning of the year, I replace my scissors with a brand new set of scissors. And I've had people say, well, that seems kind of wasteful, but really it's not. Your scissors dull over time and I use mine almost every day. So by the time I get to the end of the year, they're getting kind of dull and I need sharp scissors. So I know some folks keep their scissors for years and years and years and they go, oh, they don't cut straight anymore, but I don't replace them. <laughs> nope, I have no patience for tools that don't work. 
and scissors are probably the number one tool that I use. So they, they have to work. They have to cut straight. They have to be nice and sharp or they don't do me any good. There we go. It's still not straight, but yeah, who cares? Who cares? Nobody will notice. And if they do, I'm sure they'll keep it to themselves. <sighs> Probably best, honestly. All right, I think I'm gonna put this photo here. Could I overlap it just, just, just slightly? I think that'll look nice. Don't normally use this much black, but uh, kind of liking that high contrast today. Oh, my silhouette, ugh. Oh. Can't be bothered. I tried to contact Silhouette's customer service and they're like, take a video of it doing this, provide us with all of this 6,000 answers of information and <laughs> take a video of it doing this and try, like she sent me this really long email response and I'm like, what? <laughs> so, I may have to have my husband sit down with the email and the silhouette and see if he can sort something out between the two of them, if they can come to some sort of an agreement, <laughs> that'd be great. If not, I mean, I'm more than content to let somebody else deal with the cut filing and, uh, and I not have to, you know, that's, that's always an option as well. This is going to be a bit chunky over here, I think. Probably not ideal, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Maybe that. Didn't I have a heart or something? Oh, there it is. I was like, didn't I have something pulled out? I did. Here it is. Probably keep this one fairly, fairly simple as well. Maybe. Do I have, I have this. What are my words? What are my options? Options, options. What would look nice? Maybe this little remember that we're missing you. No, no. Leaning toward remember. We'll give that a go. We'll give that a go. See how it looks. Yeah, my crazy silhouette. Oh. I, I don't even want to, <laughs> I don't even want to deal with her anymore. She's got more sass than my teenage daughter and y'all that's saying something. I just don't have time for that. I don't have the time or the patience for more sass. I have three daughters. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here with that. <laughs> I don't have the time nor the patience. No, I, uh, I'm working on a, a, an art class at the moment. I'm taking an art class. I should clarify. I am taking an art class right now that is Harry Potter themed and really enjoying it. Really, really enjoying it. Uh, I'm not get. I haven't gotten very far yet though. So, but when I finish it, I think I'll, I'll do a quick little flip through video and show you guys my portfolio that I'm making for the class. And, uh, it's really, really cute. It's really cute kind of learning how to watercolor people, which is exciting because I don't know how to do that at the moment. <laughs> Always fun to learn something new. Taking the class nice and slow. I like kind of pre-recorded classes because then you can do that. You can kind of take it at your own pace. That's kind of fun to do. And I can redo lessons if I didn't quite get it right the first time. <laughs> which does happen as well. But yeah, so far it's been fun. So far it's been real fun to just dig out my watercolors and have a go at it. I have a kit somewhere from uh, Let's Make Art. It's a watercolor kit and I've not tried it yet. It's an older kit. I've had it for a while because I really wanted to try it. And she's, uh, the teacher is an excellent, excellent teacher. I've watched a few of her videos and on YouTube 
and she's a very, very good teacher. I just don't normally have a lot of time to just sit. Um, unless I'm scrapbooking. <laughs> I'm not just sitting, am I? I guess I'm scrapbooking too. So I just haven't really put the time into it yet. But I want to. I do want to. Give it a go. Give it a go. Give it a try. See what happens. Because you never know. Maybe I am secretly talented at watercoloring and I just don't know it yet. Maybe Harry Potter will help lead me to this new and exciting skill that I didn't even know I could do. <laughs> or more likely I'll make a giant mess but have a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did, I did a few people and it was interesting. It was not what I expected. It didn't come out terrible. I mean, it wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. Uh, but you never know, never know. I could have secret talents that are even secret from me. You know, that, that could happen, right? That's a thing. I'm pretty sure I just made that up, but I'm, I think that's a thing. Where was I putting this? I totally forgot. Right here? I'm really bad about that. I'm not trying to put it back where I intended. Right? Could be, could be a secret talent. Secret even to me. You never know until you try. I hope that doesn't catch in the binding. Let's hope. <laughs> couple little hearts and I think we'll uh, call it done. Because I'm not using Heidi Swap Color Shine in this album because it uh, dries tacky. So it's fine for scrapbook pages that you're gonna put into page protectors, but it's not great for mini albums or things that are not gonna be in page protectors and are gonna be touching other things because it all kind of sticks together. Got a couple of these little hearts on here because why not? Why not? If you can, why not? Ooh, 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 quit jumping around. My, uh, I got some more glue pens in, but I was trying to use this thing up. It's still tonic glue, and it even says it's tacky glue, which is what the, my pen is called, but it's got such a small, tip that it's you gotta like strangle it to get glue to come out i thought oh yeah it's got a great it's got a tiny little tip on it it'll be just like a fine liner bottle it'd be great yeah i don't know about that <laughs> it uh it's actually kind of hard to get glue out at all so not not what i was expecting not what i was expecting all right all right you're down there Fendo. so i need do i need one more maybe or two or 10, maybe one there. Yeah, just maybe one there I think will do it. And then I'll get out my T-square ruler and draw some lines for my journaling and we'll be done. That way, I need to sit down and just do all the journaling in this album up to now and uh, make sure that that's done so that I don't get to the end of the album and go, oh, now I gotta go back and journal about <laughs> on 50 or so pages. <laughs> Cause, oh, that'd be a bit much. I like to write, but that's a bit much. <laughs> Come up with stories for 50 pages. Yikes, yikes. Okay, here we go. Get out my trusty little T-square ruler here. Uh, I'm trying to line up with the, the page best I can, anyway. There we go. Yeah, because I have lots and lots to say about my Grandma Kennedy. She was uh, a tough lady, a tough lady, but she was very, very smart. And 
she was gonna let you know her opinion whether you wanted it or not. <laughs> this was a common trait with my grandmas, actually. And uh, starting to think that's a genetic thing at this point. <laughs> Came from multiple generations of my family. I think it was just bound to happen. I suppose it explains my truly sassy children. Because that couldn't be from me. <laughs> I have to tell you, my mother would probably disagree. It's a pretty sassy child. I remember that quite vividly. You ever have run across those kids that just don't know when to stop? Don't know when to hush? <laughs> don't know when it's in their own best interest to just Nope, don't say it. Don't, don't. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> and my children are the same way. My poor husband. So many times he's like, you need to learn to just know when to stop. I have learned this as an adult, but as a kid, it was definitely something that I struggled with. Lo knowing when to, to let it go. Whether you win or lose, the conversation knowing when to just let it go is a valuable valuable skill uh, such a valuable skill another valuable skill is being confident enough in yourself not to let negative opinions from others sway you about your own self-worth. That is another skill I had to learn the hard way. Okay, so I think we're done. <laughs> I've given myself plenty of journaling here to talk about my grandma and grandpa together. I'm uh, probably just gonna talk a little bit about where they lived and uh, some of the story, maybe a story that I've heard about the two of them. They had a really interesting life. They lived in a lot of different states, moved around a lot because once they were, he, they were both out of the military, he was a contractor for the military for several years. And what did I get on that? I don't know. So we got this page. We've got dad's grid page. I need one more photo for. We've got this page with our little tuck-in journaling spot. There we go. And uh, that's it, right? Was that it? For this page. This one as well. Which I like very simple. I think it's nice that this one's very simple. Because uh, not many of these are very simple. I don't... <laughs> get it simple as it turns out but that's it for me guys I think I'm gonna wrap this up here and hope you enjoyed a little bit longer live tonight just chatting and and working in my mini album it's getting a bit chunky <laughs> well look you can find that tag real easy okay it's getting a bit chunky I probably need to be careful uh, I still have a lot of room left too to fill in what I may do though is on some of these, I may not try to embellish. I may just go in and put, put down picture, put down a journaling spot and try to keep it even simpler. Ah, uh, we'll see, we'll see. Worst comes to worst, I can always redo the binding. No big deal. I did it in the first place. <laughs> but that's it for me guys, if you have any questions, uh, if you're watching on the replay and have a comment, please feel free to add it. Uh, I love chatting with you guys. It's the highlight of my week. And I really, really appreciate you guys coming in and just, just visiting with me while we're scrapping away. But that's it for me, guys. I hope you guys stay safe. Have a great weekend. And 